Hey and welcome back. Okay, so the part I'm going to be working on next is this part and this part. So this is going to get included in the leg area. I'm just going to open up my layers tool and I'm going to add this to my high P leg, like so. Then I can hide off all the other pieces that I'm not working on, just to make things a bit easier. Now I've got this piece at the top here that I have to build as well. So I'm just looking at this. Okay, and I'm going to build it in here. So press F4. Let's click on it. Now I'm going to start here and get these bits done, and then I'll come in and I'll do the other parts soon. First things first, start by building this part up. And I think before I do, actually, I'm just going to look at this. I'm just kind of looking constantly at how to put this together because it's a mad looking shape. Let's see if I can find a better example of it. There, that'll do. Yeah, I'll just select this by polygon then. Um, I'm going to extrude this straight up like that. Not too much, just a bit. Okay, and just bring that a little bit more. Now I can bring this out a little bit like that and I'm going to need to get rid of these internal polygons down here so let's pull these out reason being that I don't want to have intersections what I want is basically just a single polygon object it's going to make things a hell of a lot easier for us if we only have the one object so I'll delete that out Okay, next, I need to round this a bit, so I'm going to select here and here. And maybe just pull it in just a little bit too. Actually, hang on. There, do it this way. Okay, now, with these two selected only, I'm going to chamfer. I'm just looking at the angle I'll need to use here. I don't want to make it too curved. There, that should be enough. Right, now I need to kind of carve into the middle here. I'm just going to check another image. Check my references. Yep, that's fine. Okay, what I need to do here is select this one and I'm going to ring it. Actually loop it, sorry and then chamfer it fairly wide so to about there I think yeah that seems maybe a little bit wider hang on there just a little bit wider okay now what I need to do over here is just kind of look at these shapes I just extruded this, so I'm just kind of trying to figure out the best way of doing this now. Okay, I'm just going to come straight down like that and click Grow, then deselect the surrounding polygons. There we are. Okay, that leaves me just this shape here for the moment. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to detach this. I'm not even going to bother giving it a temporary name. Okay, and zoom in on it. Reset the pivot. Okay, now I need to make three cutouts in this, so... Just grab any edge. select down here, there we are, grab an edge there and I'm going to ring it and do a connect, do three of those, Just pinch them together a little bit like that, click OK and now I can move this up to here, Just keeping an eye on the width while I'm doing it, so 
I'll deselect here, here and here. Actually I'll deselect these ones as well. There we are. Okay, jump for these nice and wide like that. Maybe a little bit wider. There we are. Okay, next. I need to select all these, so I'll just use the select tool for this. And a lot of this is going to be down to careful chamfering as well. It's up to you. If you just want to do one side, you can, or you can do both. I think I'll just do the one side. Okay, and I'm going to extrude by local normal. Let's bring it in. Like that. Okay, which gives us quite a pleasing shape. Right, next. I'm going to select these. And then select the inside ones. It does need to be a smooth piece and loop. Okay. And I'm going to select the tops. And these corners. Oops. Now I can chamfer. I don't want to chamfer too wide, obviously that's too big. Bring it down a little bit, like that. And then we'll half it. Manually half it, so there you go. Click OK, bring out. There, that's looking better. Now this part over here. I'm going to select here, ring, and do a connect. One segment and do a pinch of zero that will be in the middle okay looking at this shape again I'm going to grab here and here bring it down and in mm, let's see just to there should do it yep that's fine now for this next bit let's see how many of these do I need one, two, three, four, and I've got three segments. So let's even out these segments a bit more. Let's put a connect in here. Okay, that looks good. Now I'm going to space them out slightly more evenly, because as you can see they're not really very even yet. Okay, now that's one way. We could al also use a tape measure, or it's going to be a more interesting way. Hang on, do a box using auto grid. Just bring it out like that. You can see how long it is now. It's got a length of 0.402. So if we did another box at a length of 0.1, like that then we can be sure that this is if I just go into the local world space coordinate system and drag it three times this would act as an excellent measuring marker like so so all we have to do now is line up our edges against this see quick and dirty but effective Okay. Now we'll just get rid of these. And we can work just on this. Okay, I think this unit could be a little bit too wide, but I can certainly narrow it down a little bit just by. dragging in that to about there and then I can get this piece here get to the top viewport for this ok 
Okay. Deselect the parts I don't want. Got to basically give it enough room to move. Okay, and change this to view. There, now I can bring that in. And that's a more realistic size for what I want. Next. These four. And I'm going to extrude them down. Just to about there. Take off this polygon. Actually, I should probably do them both at the same time. Hang on. There we go. Take off these polygons. That leaves us a hole here, which we will fill shortly. I'm just going to isolate this selection. Makes things a little bit less messy over here. Okay, next. Select these. And an inset two at a time. Let's decide on what my inset's going to be. That looks about right. And looks is nine tenths of the battle. There we go. Next, I'm going to extrude these up. Yeah, that seems about right. And control select by edge, deselect my middle verts. Select these side ones. and these side ones here. And there. Okay, now chamfer. And again. Like so. Now if I pull out, press F4 to look at the shape. Yep, that's fine. Press F4 again. Now I'm going to get rid of half of this. And just apply symmetry to the other half. Just on the Y axis and flip. Just do a good, a quick weld. I think that was a bit too much of a weld actually. No, it wasn't. Okay. I'm going to make a copy of this, so... There we go. And exit isolation mode. Now I'll move my copy up here. There we are. And I can start putting this piece in the right place. So, attach them back together. And do some bridging. In fact, hell, I'm just going to do the interactive bridging tool. Interactive bridging tool isn't going to work because I've got polygons behind here which you probably already knew but I'd forgotten about there we go now interactive bridging tool none are safe from bridging tool okay I'm going to do some quick target welds over here but it's just a case of attaching this thing together you see here. What I need to do really is uh, bridge these two separately. Now this is going to make a very curved piece which I'm trying to avoid as much as possible. So 
I'm going to take this edge here, just loop it. Kind of local, and just bring this back until it's literally there. Like that. Okay. Now, looking at this again. I'm going to link this piece and this piece. Okay, and it'll create that kind of diagonal link there, which I can repair shortly. I need to get the cap in place first, you see. And again, another bridge. Cap. And cap. Okay. And what I'm going to do here is just raise this piece up a little bit. If I start scaling it, as you can see, we can end up with this funky shape here. So I'm going to need to manually kind of adjust quite a lot of this in order to get it to fit. So one of the easier ways of doing this will be just to create a shed load of polygons over here. I think what I'll actually do is go from here to here, and I'm going to create connect, and I'm going to create. One, two, three, four, five, six edges. Like so. And this will give me a chance now to connect these together. Which will build a slightly more manageable model shape than we would otherwise get. Because in essence what we're doing is we're taking a curved shape and marrying it to a straight edge. As you see now, that's working a lot better than it was, and we're getting some nice straight edges there. Okay, next, do the same over here. Do this one. Just do a quick uh, connect. Okay. And then a bridge. same as last time. Okay, and that closes that area off. And it means that this area here is going to be a lot easier to manage now and won't be as bent. So I can now cap the top part. Okay, just cap that. that and that and that okay that worked okay and what I'd like to do here is just loop that probably not going to let me loop it particularly well, so I'll just manually do it to save. Hitting the button over and over again, because I just want to put a chamfer on this edge. And yeah, I could use edge checks, but we're going to hit chamfer every straight edge, 
which isn't really viable for us because if you look at our model there's actually a lot of unchamfered edges that I've deliberately left unchamfered Okay, now a tiny chamfer. That is not tiny. There, that should be fine. Let's go and check whether we've got any broken edges or polys or anything else that shouldn't be broken. No, that looks fine. Now I'm going to cap here. There we go. And that's this piece put into the right place. Now if we look up here, we have another one that I need to put on the underside. So, let's see if I can get a slightly better picture of the underside one from my reference library here. Now, this one's considerably smaller, basically because it's pushed in. I think it's really the same length, but it actually goes into the mount. So, yeah, not going to let me rotate you on the local, are you? You swain. Okay, never mind. Easy way of getting around this. I'll just uh, effect pivot. I'll rotate my pivot like so. get it lined up anywhere where I'm able to do this. There we go. Just so that I can check this pivot is lined up the way I want it to be. Then I can just do this 180 degrees. Effective though I need to put an angle snap on and then do it. There we go. And now I can put this on the underside position. Now I don't see the point in having loads of this if it's not going to be visible, so find the parts that are going to be visible first. Then I'm going to press F3 and I'm going to basically just cut out the parts that aren't visible using a quick slice. And I'm going to set my quick slice off from, let's see, probably here. Like that. And now, I just, uh, still got quick slice turned on, Dagnabbit. I just select here, grow it back. Yeah, that wasn't really a genius plan of mine, was it? There we are. Let's keep trimming until it's all gone, basically. There we are. Drop back in perspective. Zoom on it. Now, what I want to do here is take this piece. So I'm just going to select all these. set this basically by 0 or 0 0.1 well 0 0.01 0 okay and 
and this will mean that I can bring this back. Now if you look at these corners, we've got some breaks going here, so I'm going to actually have to use less than 0 0.001. So insert 0 0.001 there. Okay. Now, move this on the local. Just going to bring this back a little bit, like so. And then I want to look at it kind of face on in my user view. It's never particularly easy zooming in using user view, but never mind. There we go. And I'm going to make this uh, view align. So these will all flatten completely now against the user view. There. Now I have to cut out all these polygons and these polygons and these ones and these ones. And then I can attach this. So. Don't get them the wrong way around. There we go. Attach. Okay, I'm going to attach here at this edge first. There to there. Just do a bridge. Do the same on the other side. look I think this is slightly inset yep it is so I'm going to bring down the top edge a little bit to compensate for this so okay and select these birds here actually if you look I've got the inside seam anyway I need to see how well that's going to match up so let's press F3. Yeah, the inside seam's not really matched up with that at all. I mean, it doesn't matter that part's kind of bisected through the bottom. I'm just more worried about this piece here. So I think I'll just drag this back. select tool for this bit. And it's marquee dragging, I mean marquee selecting, just so that I can make sure I'm getting all these bits that I need. Okay, and now I can align these on basically there, and that'll be correct. Sometimes putting these things together is kind of complex, so let's get inside here. Right, for some reason this one isn't split, so I'm going to split it there to there, and just click connect. didn't want that many. Just want one connect edge. Okay, go back inside again. It means I can bridge here. Hmm, that edge is too large there. tells me there's an extra edge that I was unaware of. Yes, there is. Look at that. I think the 
best thing to do here would be for me to go like this and then do the connect there, now it should work ok, and bridge and bridge ok, now I can fill that gap there quite easily do another bridge here it's quite fun working inside the model something that you can't really do unless you're sculpting something as big as the Empire State Building in real life So. OK, let's start capping things. And there. Now then up here, I'm going to want to cap this off. So. Time for the interactive bridge tool. There and there. And then it's just a case of capping these off. It's just a case of closing the holes. Like so. OK. Quick run around the model, just make sure I haven't got any glaring errors. I can see something's going on on this corner, and I'm not sure what. Yep, there it is. I think... Yeah, just there, look. Same on this one. Let's get rid of that polygon. And that one. Now then, if we look down here... Yeah, it's because of the shape of that curve, basically. So, what I'm going to have to do instead, which I didn't especially want to have to do, but never mind, is do a create. Always do this clockwise, by the way. Oop, ha. I should be creating in polygon mode. There. And click on every vert you want to be in our object, then back to the original, and as you can see it'll <laughs> have created it all in the wrong ones, hang on, just trying to find an easier way of doing this, yeah, I'll just bridge these two together, turn off the create tool, ok, bridge those, <sighs> tell you what, 3ds Max is determined to make me look like an utter arse today, isn't it, I'll take no comment, by the way. Now then, there's our problematic edge, just there, so... I thought as much, there's a lot of internal polygons there. Ah, and that's why they are part of that edge going in. and they're literally at a zero height which is part of what's been causing this problem so change this to screen mode for a minute there same over here as well. That's better. And that's really down to the fact that uh, when I created my cap, not my cap, I mean when I aligned that plane, it basically squished all that part. So let's see if that's uh, corrected it any. It's corrected it some. I can now manually fix some of this. So I'll just do cuts. That was an inverse.
inverse cut. I didn't want to do that. It's doing it again. Stupid computer. There we go. Just randomly webbing these. Not randomly, sorry. Webbing these together. I don't know why I said randomly. Anything blooming but random. I think, yep, there's one right down there at the edge as well. There. Okay, let's have a look. There, and that's straightened that piece and made it look a lot better. Now, I can do the same over here, mainly because I don't have much choice. Okay. And just get into the right area for this. Means a little bit of fidgeting about, but it doesn't matter. Okay, in the cut mode. Okay, we now know that we're not going to cut right to left. Max will do that sometimes, it does have problems sometimes working out your cuts, although 3DS Max now compared to what 3DS Max was like back in ye olde 3DS Max days mm -hmm. is a flipping wet dream quite frankly, so seriously just be glad with the cut tools we have it's like before we had the bridge tool I can't even remember what I used to do, it was just create all the time. There we go. And that gives us that piece there. Okay, that's looking good, and I'm happy. Right, so, huh, only 37 minutes long. Uh, next piece I'm going to do will be the inverse knee, which is this part here. So till then, thanks for watching. See you in the next bit.